So today is all about uh, preparing and getting the work done ahead of the big splitting day. So these colonies will all be split uh, as soon as the queens arrive, which could be this afternoon or it could be, and of course it's gonna to rain tomorrow. So I'll have probably be doing it on Thursday. And what we're doing is we're preparing these new here to receive these. Each one has got a frame of honey in it already and a frame of uh, drawn comb. And this is all, all prepared right now to receive two frames of brood and another frame of resources from each hive. Um, and if it receives the old queen, that'll be fine. That'll uh, grow up for another couple of weeks before being sold with three or four frames of brood in there. And if it's got the new queen, the new queen goes in with that brood and by the time she is out and the bees have emerged and they've refilled, uh, I won't be selling that for three to four weeks and they will all be sorted out. Oops. So maybe we'll only sack them three high. <laughs> <laughs> was three high. That was kind of a little domino effect we just had right there. That's why I didn't put one there. No, she doesn't want to come out of the hive at all. Okay. She only comes out of the hive twice in her lifetime, perhaps. Once on her mating flight, and once if the colony swarms. Otherwise, she never sees the light of day, normally. Except when we pay her a visit. set up as the other hive here, put the foundation on the outside edges. Just starting to get to work on these frames here. Sources on this frame, but I don't see any food yet. Probably some eggs in the middle, though. Nice. Right there. Well spotted. Good job. There's a queen that on the dog. bottom She there. actually has a dog. Yeah, a queen. Nice big dog. Why does it have a dog? To make her easier to find. Yes. Really, really helps us at our <laughs> age to find the queen. <laughs> but it also helps a lot of people that aren't used to looking for the queen to be able to find her a lot easier. Okay. If one of you stands up, you're going to hold the front. Yeah. Hold it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You got her there. Okay. So what I'll do is um, she's going to go down to the bottom also. So this is going to get moved. And I'll move this to make space to put more things. Also, the colored dot on the queen kind of tells you her age because each dot Not in this particular case oh here we go it's probably a poor example of that unfortunately yep because, we're gonna uh, cut oh, that one out okay because <laughs> yeah. anyway w what i meant to say was uh the color dot on their back is a year right or did you just go through and do your well in, in effect uh, basically this this particular example of a queen with a dot on the back is the breeder that I get these bees from has his own peculiar method of ah, okay. Okay. And so whilst normally 
the color on the queen dictates the year she was born. Yeah. In this particular case, it does not. And I've got multiple queens with pink and green and purple. So a lot of times some it will... Which are colors that not, not right. normally Right. It will depict the breeder's method of identifying That's probably right. their own years or their something like that. Why don't you stand right over this box, honey, with that, just in case she falls off. She'll fall right into the box. A little bit of drone brood there. Resources. from here. time we come back we can make uh, four nukes out of each of these hives and only take us about two or three minutes to do it. <laughs> Sometimes you go in and you find the queen on the first frame you pull out. I'm generally not that lucky. <laughs> Look at this lovely brood here. Look, if you look behind me, come from over my shoulder, Amy. Over my shoulders and see frame full of eight day old larvae. See the old bright white larvae and they'll try and reflect it to nice. Can you see it? Oh, no, let me zoom in. I'll turn it back and forth so we can see the bright white wet looking larvae. Nice. 
they're just about to pupate. The ones in the middle are pup pupating, so they're getting sealed over. By the end of the day, they'll all be sealed over as they go into their pupating stage. Mm -hmm. See the two ones on the knee there? Cells are about two thirds full of white lava. These are just at the stage where they're starting to pupate, and that's what these ones all see the tappings are doing. They're pupating like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the same stage for the bees. There's our queen. Uh huh. Pink dot. Pink dot. Uh, okay. Yep, may as well. Don't brood. Oh, oh, it's falling off. See the mite there? Bees are having a go at it right now. See the one, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
on the frame below that was in between the two, so that's where we found the mic before. So basically when the, the two supers are yeah. separated, there's like a half inch gap between the bottom of one frame and the top of another. And it's so a very they, common place where they put in drone larvae oh. in that empty spell, in that empty space. And it's a good opportunity to get a, some indication of whether you have many mites in the hive or not. One mite amongst them is not necessarily unexpected. But a heads up, they're not without mites. And so they kill the larvae if they have mites? If they're exposed like that, they're going to kill the larvae anyway. Oh, okay. Take them out and they'll be tossed out of the hive. In fact, you can see they're already starting to take them out of the hive down there. There's one there. Oh. 